very warm welcome to the Right Balance podcast. I'm Diane Wright, your host. Here is where I'd like to share stories and interviews with leading practitioners and coaches all under the health and wellness umbrella. We'll be including holistic therapies, inspirational people, and a vast array of experts to help you get on the right path. Join me every week for advice and information that will offer help and support because we all need the right balance in life. Good morning, everybody. Um, I've got a really lovely lady with me today, uh, an experienced physiotherapist and a Pilates teacher, Rosanna. Welcome to the Right Balance podcast, Rosanna. It's lovely to have you here. Um, Rosanna works predominantly with women and children. Since relocating in Cumbria, England in 2019, uh, she has further trained as a holistic core restore coach, which essentially combines her physiotherapy therapy, sorry, knowledge with a more holistic approach with a special emphasis on pelvic health, pregnancy, nutrition, post-birth, soft tissue therapies, and the peri to post-menopausal years. Rosanna is also, this is new to me, Rosanna, is an accredited Mm -hmm. mummy MOT practitioner, which involves carrying out a a specific and specialist comprehensive postnatal examination and checkup for all mums whether they've birthed vaginally or via a C-section. Welcome, my goodness me, where do we start (laughs) here? I would like, um, welcome first of all, Rosanna. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. I'd like to take you right back to the beginning of your journey on this and how it all came about. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's been a bit of a long convoluted journey to where we are now. It actually... It started back as a teenager. Um, I was a quite a good uh, track and field athlete, cross country runner. Um, and in my teen years, I started experiencing um, a lot of stress incontinence, so bladder leaking when I was when I was running. And you know, as a as a 15, 16 year old girl, this was um, hugely embarrassing. Um, I didn't know anyone else that had struggled with it. So along I went via doctors and and actually ended up seeing a women's health physio. Um, And, uh, you know, being a teenager, I'd wanted to be a physio for a long time, but I'd always thought that they just worked in the sports field. (laughs) But actually, there's a there's a big speciality in uh, women's health now often known more as pelvic health. Um, So that kind of, I guess, planted the seed. But but really, I um, it was almost too close to home. Um, to think oh I could be in a position to treat other ladies because I actually was still struggling with it myself Um, and unfortunately actually um, because that was a good 15-20 years ago the research around um, managing young teenage athletes suffering with this which actually is very common in uh, runners and trampolinists and gymnasts um, but is still a bit of a taboo subject The, the research thankfully has come a long way now and you know, the, the aim is more to try and keep athletes within the thing that they love. Whereas I was told I had to stop running and that was it, game over. So, you know, that was quite a defining moment for me. Um, and anyway, I trotted off to university, um, you know, had running by the start, you know, had given up running um, and thought, oh, I'll go into um, sports physio. So I did all my different rotations um, and then I started at a hospital and within the first year of training, I, I was put on the, the women's health rotation. Well, you know, as a young, I was about 22, not had children myself and then ended up um, visiting mums the day after they'd had a baby, giving them information about their pelvic floors. And um, I just was a bit overwhelmed by it all, really. Um, thought I think I need to know get you know learn a bit more about this because it wasn't something really we were taught at university just a few uh, lectures here and there so I I did actually really enjoy those six months and I had a a, an amazing mentor um, and she kind of I guess started me on my journey but but the nature of physio in the NHS at that time anyway was that you spend a few months um, in each area so I worked um, in the stroke department. I worked in intensive care as a respiratory physio. I worked in outpatient, seeing people that had had a you know hip and knee replacement. Um, and then you kind of bog standard like shoulder pain, knee pain. Um, and then I spent some time working with kids. 
um, which I really love. So that could be, you know, from naught to 16 um, kids that maybe had been born with a congenital, so a like genetic condition affecting their bones and muscles. And maybe they'd had an injury, an accident. You know, so I, I like that. And I, I felt I love kids and I love women. What do I do? And I couldn't really find a job that that, you know, had both. So I actually ended up working at a children's hospital for a couple of years before then going into work at a women's hospital. <laughs> so um, like I said, a bit of a convoluted journey. And um, this was all prior to having children. Um, so I, I guess, um, yeah, I, I felt like I was, I was learning, um, but I almost didn't know where to go next. Um, so I ended up having, having two children. Um, just like that, you know. <laughs> um, I actually had a um, couple of C-sections. So again, kind of all linked in with the previous, my yeah. previous pelvic health history. Um, but I, which time I had seen some more physios, because like I said, the research is, um, you know, changed and was encouraged to to go back to running. Um, so I'm glad to say I, I do now run, um, have been running for the last six to eight years. Um and and I've had two two C sections, and so while I was on maternity leave with my second daughter, we were living in Birmingham and looking to relocate to Cumbria more for a lifestyle change because we love the Lake District and both my, me and my husband not uh, we're not from here but we grew up coming to the Lake District with our families okay. every year. My hus my husband's family are from the northwest, um, and I, I knew in my head that I wanted to. Um, yeah work with the my two passions women and children which I know is a bit still very big it's not exactly niche but um and and then with Pilates on the side that I'd forgot to mention but I have been doing that since about 2013 um to complement my NHS role and then also with the idea that one day I'd you know work on my own um so yeah so we moved up for October 2019 um uh, found this beautiful place here where I am at the health barn in Ascombe quite by accident really just through um through this sounds very random my youngest daughter and there was a naturopath working here at the time and um we were taking her along for some bowel issues and um came into the building and I said to my husband oh, this is where I want to work this is kind of my idea of like yeah you know work in a converted barn and in the countryside yeah it's beautiful so, it I is. know I know it's absolutely so, stunning yeah, yeah it, it is, is it is yeah so it I is. got very excited had a chat with Chris and Keris who who run it here and um yes set the ball rolling just literally before Covid so so you know Covid then changed uh, <laughs> put an end to the three weeks of Pilates classes and the kind of face-to-face -face clients that I'd literally just started rolling. Um, and I should say just before that, so about two, it must have been two years ago now, or maybe even three years, that's when I trained, which I'll talk about in a bit, the Mummy MOT practitioner. Yeah. So I'd already done a lot of training before then launching. Um, and then, yeah, it's been a bit of a difficult challenging year um but here we are yeah Brilliant. that's kind of my journey into it <laughs> excellent no that's fantastic and it's I like I like how you've diversified away from the word of physiotherapist and I think yeah people automatically think of like you say a sore shoulder or a sore back we'll go to the physio they'll give us some exercises yeah. but I think yeah. when you go down forgive me for saying this, the rabbit hole into yeah. different areas that really light bulb moments for you. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's more defining more health concerns. And I think yes. that's really important nowadays. Like you say, it's not often yeah. or wasn't often talked about, about the pelvic floor. It was, yeah. it wasn't yeah. talked about um, what happens after you have your baby. It was a kind of yeah. in the pregnancy reflexology that I do, it, it was yeah. always talked about Oh well, you you just have your baby and that's it. You know, if you've got problems, yes. come and see us. Well, yeah. it's not as cut and dry as that. And I think no. um, you're offering this this fabulous um, insight into what happens with the body on all levels, holistically, yes. which I yes. think is amazing. So when people come to you, Rosanna, yeah. into the into the health barn, ask them. Yeah. Can you just talk through to the listeners what would happen or um, yeah, what would happen when they come to see you there as in a clinic environment? 
yeah. So um, prior to people coming in, I send them a quite a detailed pre-screen, um, and it off, you, you know essentially no subject is taboo when we're going down this like women's health route um because uh, like you said a lot of people might think that they're coming to see a physio about their hip pain for example yeah. but actually I don't necessarily just want to know did they have an injury in their hip um pain can be linked to your pelvic floor um and actually um yeah like you know the the, the questioning goes into very a lot of detail so asking about your, your bowel habits um you know what's normal for you do you have to strain um asking about your bladder habits how many times a day what do you drink really getting a picture a whole yeah. picture um of of you as a person um because nothing works in isolation does it um and 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 the other thing actually is um yeah, asking, particularly if they're coming for a postnatal assessment, so this mummy MOT, um, you know, I, I before before I did the training, so like 10 years ago, I wouldn't actually even have it on my radar to think that how someone births their child might then have an impact later on on some um, yeah. pain or symptoms or, you know. Yeah. Um, actually, so finding out, yeah, really in detail about their birth, whether whether it was traumatic, whether it was planned, whether it was what they expected, whether there was a lot of, of pushing involved, any interventions. Um, and sometimes people think, well, why do they want to know that? Why does a physio want to know how long I pushed for mm -hmm. or whether I had four steps? Well, actually, that is really key because it tells us the story of what your, or what your pelvic floor went through and also potentially what to what I'm looking then for on an examination if I know that they did have forceps or, or an instrumental delivery. Um, similarly, with a, a C-section, you know, um, asking again, was it an emergency? Because an emergency, you know, there's kind of like three types of C-section. There's an emergency as in a crash C-section. So that might be when someone put under general anaesthetic and it's really like, very emergency then there's emergency that's you know they might pull the buzzer and they know they've got like maybe 30 to 60 minutes or something so it's still not planned but it's not a crash and then you have more you plan you plan c-section um and really it's treating those as different entities in themselves because they have a different impact you know we we talk about trauma the body yeah. keeps a score and, and trauma is held within the tissues and so it's really important to find out um you know yeah a, a lot about that birth and and pregnancy whether you know how their pregnancy was um because that also can give indications as to what we might expect from like pelvic girdle pain hip pain yeah. coccyx pain so um yeah so i want to you know do very thorough deep screen um asking things um also then what they enjoy doing because as we know we're not just a limb are we we're not yeah. just a pelvis <laughs> And I think I think that's really important, particularly in pelvic health issues, when um, people might um, be suffering with a prolapse. Um, and uh, again, you know, I can talk more about that if, if you need to find out a bit more about what a prolapse is. But um, I think people sometimes feel quite defined. And I know I did as a teenager felt defined by yeah. this condition. Um, but we know that, um, you know, it's not just pelvis. And and there's a there's a top physio that I that I greatly admire. And she talks about um like we're we're physios, so we're my orthopedic musculoskeletal. So by that we mean bone and muscle physios. Um but we don't just have our head in the pelvis. So mm -hmm. we're looking yeah. outside and inside. And it's it's not it's not taking anything in isolation. It's seeing everything as a whole um and finding out what is important for that lady. What do they want to get back to? Um what what are they what are their fears? What are their worries? Because um, again, a lot of them are misguided um, or or heard things on the internet and catastrophized and things like that. So, so really finding out about that person. Um, the the then assessment itself may and be, be as varied as um, you know asking like having a look at what they're like in standing. And so, kind of your typical physio that you might see when you go and have you hurt your knee. Um, so looking at how how well they can move, different positions, sit to stand, lunging, um, looking for pain, looking for symmetry, um, and then also checking um, something called the, the tummy check. So they sometimes do this when a mum goes to see their GP or the midwife. So this is looking um, 
at the lady's um, tummy around the tummy button. So it's it's called your linear alba, that line between your, between your tummy muscles. <coughs> um, and looking for, is there some connection? Is there some tension? Is some, um, or is, is there quite a lot of softness and not as much um, muscle energy created? And, and that's because all, all women um, who have gone through pregnancy will experience some degree of widening. It's the body's adaptation to enabling us to carry a baby. So those tummy muscles at the front will then widen and uh, I think separate sometimes is a bit too harsh of a word, but essentially that's that's what happens. So widening, thinning and weakening to then allow the baby to grow. Now, after baby, depending on a lot of factors, such as maybe how big a baby was, but also genetics, um, the, the muscles, you know, they won't ever go fully like pre-baby but they should start to come, you know, Back start together. knitting together again. Yeah. But in, in some women that, that is, is lost a little bit. And so that's why we're checking that because that has a, that there's a lot, of, again, a lot more research going on and that is called rectus diastasis. So um, if, you know, and again, lots of people don't realize that physios can do, do specialize in yeah. working with improving um, the, not only the gap, so the distance between the, the right side and the left side of the rectus abdominis, those six pack muscles, but also improving the depth. Um, so those muscles, the deep tummy muscles that they're actually activating and working and, and you know, can the mum do, you know, can they pick up their baby? Can they, you know, get in and out of the car, do lots of things with with getting those muscles working correctly? Does right. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Absolutely um, fascinating. Do you find as well, just bringing in the Pilates, Rosanna, as well, yeah. do you find there's a lot more, obviously, the women maybe coming for that reason to help with the internal strength of the muscles and tendons? And, yes, and, and yes. Things. And, yeah. I, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and where, whereabouts is the Pilates? Where can people come and join your Pilates class? Um, so at the moment, I'm um, running a Pilates class on a Monday evening. So at at the health barn in Ascombe. Um, and that is running at 6.30 till 7.30. So that's right. kind of Pilates. Oh, brilliant. Pilates for all. Um, and actually a lot of the early postnatal rehab is, is quite Pilates based. Um, so it's thinking about breathing, um, thinking about getting that connection between our brain and our tummy, our brain and our pelvic floor. Um, and I have got plans. I was doing a, a postnatal Pilates, um, but again, with COVID, everything's kind of just been put a little bit on on the hold as, you know, kind of waiting to see what these next few months are going to okay. gonna bring. And I also um, was uh, reading about you, about um, the sort of sexual problems that women have as well. Mm -hmm. Does that come more so into the physio side of things as well? Um, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. So actually... Um, I was going to say that thank you for reminding me so that's one of the questions we talk about bowel and bladder and then sexual right problems you know because that can give um quite an indication as again like I said nothing's off, off topic so um it it's sometimes it's just sometimes knowing how to how to approach the question some people can be quite taken aback that we would ask a question so it's yeah. you know done sensitively but mm -hmm. but it's it's basically trying to get the word out there that if someone is experiencing pain and discomfort um on for example, initial penetration or deep penetration, neither of those are should should be put up with really and yeah. can indicate some underlying issues such as um, a lot of tension, like stiffness in the pelvic floor muscles, or um, it could be after a traumatic delivery and there's some scar tissue that is causing some tightness, stiffness, and not as uh, it's not as pliable. Um, and deep deep pelvic pain um, can again indicate other conditions such as endometriosis and um but like I said there's just not enough um understanding about it but it is really important so that would part inform my assessment as well and um we see a lot of ladies with conditions such as like uh, you might hear words like vagissimus um and it, essentially like inability to um to experience penetration or to insert a tampon so um those all give a give a, a picture as to how best to treat this this lady because as, as you said when we see someone a, a key part of the assessment is 
is actually doing a, a vaginal examination, um, which isn't as scary as it sounds. It's not like a smear test um, with a speculum or anything. It, it's literally a, a single digital examination. By digital, I mean my finger, <laughs> gloved <laughs> finger. Um, and, and what we're looking for then uh, is can the muscles c- create some strength the pelvic floor as if you're stopping yourself past wind or wee and then they can they let go and um it's it's really important uh to feel the muscles increasing so creating some tension some strength but also letting go and surprisingly a lot of women um you know we're told to like squeeze 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 um almost end up squeezing too much and then struggle to let go and and it's with anything if you're um lif- lifting up a bicep you know, a, a weight with your with your arm, you want to be able to lift it up and then let it go. And that's what we're looking for in the pelvic floor muscles. And so, like you said, asking someone about their sexual history concerns and um, bowel and bladder all feeds into Come our together. assessment. Yeah. 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 Really so it really is very, very in-depth, detailed. And yeah. doesn't all we can't always get through everything in one session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. And yeah. the other thing is that I'm super excited to ask you about this because this is brand new to me. This is yeah. um, the Mummy MOT practitioner. Um, yeah. Can you tell listeners all about, and me, all about this one, please? Yeah, so the Mummy MOT um, practitioner. So this was set up seven years ago by a lady called Maria Elliott, who's a very experienced physio down in London, um, noticing that there was a big gap. She actually used to work in France um, where mums are given by the government, um, I think it's about six sessions, six to 10 sessions of postnatal physio. Um, Unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, And, uh, you know, I did read last week that they are setting up some pilot centres, I think 14 around the country, to um, improve the journey of of mums um, after birth. but at the moment, there is a quite a big gap in the NHS and, and a lot of mums, and I experienced this myself, um, have the six to eight week check at the GP. And, and it really, unfortunately, it's not their fault. It's it's time, <clears throat> time pressures and, and, you know, managing their caseload. But it often is a five to 10 minute conversation um, asking about um, baby, maybe asking about the mum's well-being. Um, often not an internal assessment or a thorough assessment. And so a lot of mums um, might will just feel like they haven't had a good enough um kind of checkup and are told yeah six weeks tick off you go you can start running or you know um so so that came out of this this kind of gap um whereby mums really have a right you know to you know have have a deep assessment um of their of their new body um and so this so there's a few hundred of us around the country so we've um you know additional training um essentially making it fairly standardized so that mums know it's kind of like a safe you know it's not just an off the cuff thing it's like a, a, a standardized regulated thing um where they know they're coming for essentially what i would do in my day-to-day practice anyway um, but an, under this umbrella term of a mummy MOT, which means the great thing about it is that there's, we'll put the link in the show notes, there's a practitioner directory that you can type in your postcode where Brilliant. you live and find out your local mummy MOT practitioner. So you know that they've had like specialist training. Um, there is part of a network. So sometimes there are tricky cases that we that we discuss if, if you know, that's appropriate. Um, basically trying to um, create better service and better journey. Um, and then... Um, yeah it, it's brilliant and actually I'd say that the vast majority of my work at the moment is through mums um, like you know I've seen people even as far as Scotland I know we are quite close to Scotland but it's in about 45 minutes um, and then across from to West Cumbria East Cumbria South like I, I would say brilliant. people are traveling within a, a, an hour radius um, because there's just simply not enough um, enough specialist physios you know you don't have to be a mummy OMT practitioner to see yeah. a postnatal to do a postnatal assessment but um yeah like I said you know every woman should really have the uh the opportunity to go and see someone um and then just linked into that so that's kind of like the initial assessment and then I've trained additionally as a holistic core restore coach which um kind of came from more of a personal training coaching um kind of entity so combining those two so getting the the physio kind of um internal assessment uh sexual health kind of thing um and the yeah the the physio side combined then with holistic core restore which essentially um is a lot of different programs um aimed at 
whatever stage in life that 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 lady is um it you know don't have to be postnatal it can be like menopausal and it's all about the woman at the center thinking how can we treat this lady holistically help working in a partnership so not i'm fixing you you know and things yeah a lot of nutrition a lot of um relaxation vagus nerve things which you'll know about you know um yeah really stuff that we weren't so much taught in physio school um but i feel like the combination of these two um is really adding to my practice and absolutely yeah it. (laughs) it is it's fabulous and i think as you say more and more different concepts or modalities are just coming in to help other little things to be tweaked in Mm -hmm. a way um to to open up this umbrella of like wow it's not yeah I'm gonna sound a really bit off here but I don't mean to be um because I I really appreciate the NHS for me personally but sometimes Mm -hmm. they're just stuck um yeah and we need to bring out everything else that there is help other than the doctors you know Yes. Step away from that for five minutes and just have a look around about you, L- like yes. yourself and the girls that you work with down at the yes. health barn at Askham. I mean, yes. it's it's fabulous, a fabulous little hub of wellness holistically for everybody. Yes. And, and the, the brilliant thing with that is that I've had a few ladies. We often, a lady will come, <laughs> they think they're just coming to see me. But then they yeah. start their little health barn journey because it might be that their their nervous system is so stressed and yeah. so uptight and upregulated that it's difficult for me to say either perform a vagina assessment or to um ca- like start an exercise program. So then I might send them to um Chris reflexologist yeah. or they go and have a float in the in the float tank That's or right. um have a deep massage and, and the same with scars. So I see C section scars. But if there's a tricky scar or a, a scar that's really um, quite stiff or maybe beyond my expertise, then there's another lady, that um, Rachel Shreve, and she is a scar therapist. Um, and similarly, I, I you know, Keris, the chiropractor, and another lady, Rachel, is a chiropractor. They might then refer people on to me who are then yeah. highlighted that they've got some pelvic floor issues. So it's a real, it's it's absolutely brilliant. And you're right, you wouldn't get this in the NHS um, as good as it is um, yeah. because there's not the time um, yeah. or yeah. the ability to to work closely with such different, varied practitioners. Yeah, is, no. yeah, really brilliant. <laughs> it's a fabulous, fabulous setup. Um, and and I know Chris and, and, and uh, of Keris as well and. They've, mm-hmm. they've put together this fabulous uh, health barn, which is what yes. it is. And that's yeah. fabulous. Um, Rosanna, thank you so much for thank all you your much. time and explanation. <laughs> and me I hope it makes sense new. to people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's great to have somebody to reach out to with yes. your expertise in these um, defined um, therapies, if you like. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I think more and more people need to, to reach out to, to people like yourself yeah yeah don't thank, suffer in silence absolutely That's absolutely no thank you yeah. thank you so much um rosanna as i say works at the health barn in Ascombe, which is right for all our international listeners right on the edge or a step throw from the lake district north cumbria in england um rosanna keep up the great work and <laughs> thank uh, you very ho- much hope to catch up with you soon yes, thank you yes, so come much and visit us. <laughs> i will <laughs> okay thank you Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Right Balance podcast. Hope you enjoyed the content. Please tell your friends and family and don't forget to subscribe to the show. It will also be uploaded to the social media channels like Facebook and YouTube, including all the show notes. I hope you join me next week. Stay safe. 